Fashion Week in New York, London, Sydney, Milan or Paris. In the industry, it's the pinnacle, where haute couture is fantasy on parade, a spectacle designed to scintillate more than sell, displayed on bodies more ethereal than real. It's very hard to find a really great model, very hard. We're looking for the strangest girl in the class, the tallest girl in the class, taller than the boys. We're looking for a girl who's lanky and skinny because that's really what the designers want. Who's that girl? In 2010, 17-year-old French model Victoire Macon Doxeur was the designer's choice, named one of the top 20 models in the world after being discovered on the streets of Paris. I was just watching a window mm -hmm. um, outside. Window and, shopping. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And a guy literally came to me and told me, oh my God, you are the next Claudia Schiffer. The offer from the world famous elite modeling agency was too tempting to refuse. And at five foot 10 and a mere size eight, stunning Victoire looked born to stride the catwalk. What sort of buzz did you get when you were walking the catwalk? You really have an extraordinary feeling. And you have all the light and the music and the rhythm walking. This is the magic part. Eden Mackney was just 15 when she too was scouted. Tall and willowy, the size eight Australian schoolgirl obviously had the perfect look but learn quickly, not quite the perfect body. Look, you look amazing, but like we just need that extra inch off or your legs need to be slimmer and are you running or because you just got a little bit too much muscle definition. And, and for a 15 year old as you were, what was that like to hear? <sighs> Destroying, like I'd walk out nearly every single time and just cry to my mum because I was like, I want this so bad, but I'm not good enough. It's just, it ruins your self-esteem. It was a cruel introduction to a dream job. A nightmare shared by Victoire, who at a slim 58 kilos was considered 10 kilos overweight for the runway. When you were first scouted and then when you met with the modeling agency, did they ever say you're, you're too fat? They never told me you're too fat or you have to lose weight, but they took my measurements around my hips and I was 92 centimeters and they told me you have to be under 90 um, and they wrote um, 87 on my com cards. Uh, so I had to, to lose two sizes of clothes um, in two months. So that's why um, I actually literally stopped eating and I ate three apples a day. The hard truth is you need to almost disappear to appear at Fashion Week. If you don't fit an American size zero, a size four in Australia, the designers simply won't book you. Victoire shunned food to shed the weight and within two months found herself in the grip of anorexia. As you entered this world and you decided to eat three apples a day, nothing more, did you not realise how dangerous it was? No, I didn't because I thought I was going to do that for two months only and then it would be okay and I would eat properly again. But at this point, anorexia was in my head in a way and I had not seen it coming. Were you just cutting down or were you starving yourself? Starving myself. I mean, I was hungry. So I, you know, would go to bed all the time hungry. But I was so scared of eating because I thought that that's what was making me not get that inch off my hips. Skinny is not um, a bad word. Skinny is how you evolve as a young person. I would like to book some showgirls that are coming in and I can't even book them. Carol White is the outspoken owner of one of the world's biggest modeling agencies, Premier. I hate this girl. Made more famous by this behind the scenes docudrama, The Model Agency. Skinny is not a a word to sneer at, it's just how it is for that 
particular age and time. Yeah, I, I'm not sneering at the word, but it is also it, it can also be a cruel word depending on what girls do to be skinny, to be those models. I would say before everyone starts hammering these girls, we need to have scientific facts that models cause eating disorders because I don't believe it. I don't think the girls are being hammered. I think the industry is, that the expectation on them is yeah, but to be that way. No one is doing any, any proper research. They're not. All agencies in the world, really, nowadays, are like really clued up on nutrition and we make sure that our girls go to the gym up the road. Of course, most models have a high metabolism at their young age and they eat rubbish. They usually eat chips and Big Macs and Nando's and things like that. How many of your models actually eat that sort of junk food? I would food? think most of them, actually. And we try and then educate them that it's just not great and um, they need to eat in a more healthy way, like porridge. I've been to many fashion shows where girls around me have passed out and because we haven't eaten all day. And we'd even have agencies recommend to us not to eat before the show because we don't want to be bloated. Do you think that you can succeed as a top model without an eating disorder? No. <laughs> really? Um, well, I think there are exceptions, but it is like 2% of the population on Earth uh, which can eat um, like absolutely whatever they want without gaining on weight. In the throes of the eating disorder, Victoire was in constant pain, prone to fainting, and was dubbed the catwalk yeti because she'd grown a thick layer of hair on her body, a common symptom of anorexia. Obviously, you couldn't just eat three apples a day for eight months. So what else did you do yeah. to, to make yourself as thin as possible? I didn't do very glamorous things. <laughs> um, but I was so frightened to gain on weight that I took laxatives and enemas, and that damages your, your body too. It's this cruel reality that Victoire details so explicitly in her book and firmly in her sights are the designers. Why are breasts and hips the enemy in the fashion world? That is a good question. Uh, I have no idea. I don't know if it's because it, it, it mostly is men uh, who are, you know, fashion directors and designers in this world and they want to, to kill all femininity and they, they hate women, you know, I have they no idea. They hate women? Well, I think you have to really hate women to, to kill all that because it is the sign of, of femininity, you know, and we should celebrate it instead of killing it. It's an industry that's long been shrouded with controversy, a warped world of contradictions that worships tall Amazonian women but expects them to be the shape of a prepubescent child. Child women who are not expected to speak out. Do you think to ask a, a 5 foot 10, 17 year old who's a size 8 to fit into size 4 clothes, you know, the American size 0, is humane? Well, I think humane's quite a strong word. I mean, presumably she has a mind of her own as well, but I don't know, I don't really know what you're talking about. Well, she was told that if she was to be booked for the shows, that that's what she would have to do. Well, then she must have had a really rotten agent because no agent can actually say you're going to be booked for the shows until they go on the castings and they go in and they fit the um, clothes, so... Agent to some of the biggest names in modelling, I mean, Carol White, is offended uh, when I detail some of Victoire's experiences with another modelling agency. Right, what about lying on your booking card to say that you're actually smaller than you actually are in the hope that by the time the fashion weeks come round you will actually fit that size? Is that common practice? Um, not here, but I would think if effectively, I don't... Gosh, your words are really strong, actually. It's sort of quite annoying me, lying. I, I'm not trying to annoy you, Carol. I'm you just, are annoying me. Well, I may be annoying <laughs> you, but I'm not trying to. I'm, I mean, seriously, no, there is a problem I don't within, like it. There's it, clearly a problem within the industry if people are being asked to do stuff. Listen, I would say... I, w I am very outspoken, but I don't like your terminology to me. Carol, I didn't make this I up. I need a cigarette. This was an experience right. of a model. Well, I've, quite frankly, I can 
do without it because I'm very happy to answer it, but I don't like your terminology. I don't like you. Harry, you're asking me the question. You're still fu fucking filming me. Just don't. No, I'm really annoyed because I thought this would be quite a broad well, interview. Yeah, well, if we can continue, it will be. Thanks for your time. With the rapid rise, there came a rapid fall. At just eight months into her career, the eating disorder and the cruel mind games of the fashion industry became too much for Victoire, and she tried to take her own life. They just wanted to kill the loneliness, and I didn't want to, to suffer anymore, you know, in a way. And I woke up in the hospital the day after. I got to the tiniest I had ever been, and it still was never enough. I felt like I needed to shave bone off. I didn't know how to get smaller. For three years, Eden persisted, trying to meet the demands of her agent to lose her invisible fat, all the while suffering anorexia. And then the reality hit her. She could die in the pursuit of her dream. Instead, she quit. There are girls who have passed away, have gone into cardiac arrest, have end up hospitalised, and it, no one's talking about it. Is it easy for you to make a choice? No. How do you select the meal you choose? Well, something healthy, of course. But what does healthy mean for you? What's healthy? <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's a tricky question. Oh, here we are. Merci beaucoup. Six years on and no longer anorexic, but the struggle with food is still a constant battle for Victoire. During the height of your modelling, how much food would this represent in terms of how much you would eat over a certain period? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know, a month. A month? That would be a month's worth of food for you. <laughs> it's one meal. I know. These days, 24-year-old Victoire lives in London and is studying to be an actor. She's given up modelling to be the cover girl of a different kind, an insider committed to declaring the industry's flaws in the hope it will be kinder to young women, to start treating them like humans, not coat hangers. I have so many messages from many models uh, encouraging me to continue and saying me thank you so much for talking about it because we live exactly the same. It's great to know that everybody wants a change, you know, so it's good. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.